My name is Gorio Namo, and I am uh, your course director. I'm a full professor, chief researcher, and the Xero Chair in Climate and Sustainability Transitions at the University of South Africa. I am an NIRF rated uh, researcher in the fields of green economy, climate change, sustainable development, and I've published widely in these areas. I have over 25 years of work experience drawn from a mix of academic and consultant spheres. Now, as we move forward, uh, among uh, my offerings are 17 books, four co-authored and three edited, more than 100 journal articles and many book chapters. Since 2013, I have graduated 11 PhDs and I'm currently supervising six others. I have also hosted 11 postdoctoral fellows from across Africa, a landmark I am so proud of. I was responsible for developing this course and I will also be delivering recorded lectures or talks if you so wish to call them. I am just excited to be part of this great initiative from IDEP and its collaborating partners. I wish to welcome you all to the course one focusing on climate and carbon market readiness. In this recording, I will focus on the course overview. This is the overall course overview, and I move right into it. So course one is uh, focusing on climate and carbon market readiness. And uh, the presentation uh, in terms of what is going to be covered in this course, uh, I'll start by an overview, and then I'll go to the context and course rationale. I'll also do the module list, the course objectives, skills that you are going to be gaining or imparted from this course, pedagogical approaches and modes of delivery, the target audience, and of course, I'll enter by the module details and also directing you to further readings. Now, in terms of the overview, uh, in this PowerPoint, we'll present the course outline, which includes the Climate and carbon market readiness uh, course for the climate and carbon readiness uh, red, uh, climate and carbon readiness course. The course is provisionally scheduled to start on 26 September 2022 and ending on the 28th of October 2022. The material presented in this uh, recording include issues covered in the course modules outlines topics to be covered, and of course, selected reading materials. Now, let me move on to the context and rationale of the course. Despite renewed interest, particularly after the adoption of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the Paris Agreement to deploy carbon market policies, Africa's share in these carbon markets remains too marginal or even at best invisible, except possibly for South Africa, Kenya, and maybe one or two other countries in Africa. This training aims to allow African countries to internalize key core benefits offered by the carbon market instruments as appropriate. I think the way to underline there is as appropriate. Carbon market instruments, which tend to offset, remove, and reduce excessive carbon emissions from the atmosphere, mainly include taxes as well as credits and permits. This is on the global target for greenhouse gas emissions that are generally agreed upon politically for specific periods in specific countries, governments administer how they intend to limit these emissions. And by the way, when we're not talking about greenhouse gas emissions, we are referring to those harmful uh, gases that are emitted uh, in, in their natural state, but mainly uh, caused by our activities as human beings. And among them is uh, carbon dioxide, uh, carbon monoxide, uh, we've got nitrogen dioxide, methane, and, and others. Historically, governments and other key players uh, used the Kyoto Protocol of 1997, which uh, became uh, uh, effective or ratified in 2005, as an instrument to reduce these greenhouse gas emissions and also as an instrument providing the carbon market. However, in 2015, a revised and new carbon market mechanism 
he made in the Paris in Paris under the Paris Agreement, and within that Paris Agreement, the carbon markets are addressed under Article Six, uh, uh, with the NDCs national nationally determined contributions forming a broad base for the carbon markets. Don't worry about Article Six and the nationally determined contributions for now, because these are subjects uh, to for further discussions in our next uh, lectures. I want to move on now to the course objectives. Now, in terms of our course, we have got a, a number of objectives that we want to um, attain or achieve or meet after this course. And by the way, remember this course is going to run for five weeks and it runs uh, asynchronously. So you'll be having your time to follow the course online, uh, go through recorded material and answer uh, uh, certain tasks that will be allocated to you. Objective one there is to enhance capacity regarding the uptake of climate and carbon markets in Africa within the global context. Number two, to have participants appreciate the need for carbon markets through understanding trends and drivers of carbon emissions. Number three, to provide a historical background in the development of global carbon and climate markets with the focus of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change and the Kyoto Protocol. We also uh, focus at, at providing insights into regulatory and voluntary climate and carbon markets. Continuing with our objective, we also aim to enhance Africa's greenhouse gas emissions reduction efforts, thereby contributing to climate compatible and climate resilient development. Number six, to present developments in the post-Kyoto Protocol climate and carbon markets with emphasis on the Paris Agreement and the Glasgow Pact that embraces the net zero emissions by 2050. Lastly, we seek to establish the readiness in policy and institutional framework for climate and carbon markets, including regulatory mandates, incentives, and market-driven solutions. I have got other uh, objectives that I was almost excluding. I'll just add them. We also wish to determine readiness parameters in financing the climate and carbon markets from the private sector, multilateral development banks, and other actors. And of course, we also look at building capacity to analyze, measure, monitor, report, and verify climate and carbon market development pathways and trajectories for our continent. These are some of the objectives that we are hoping we will be able to attain after completing this course. Now, moving on to the uh, list of the modules we will cover, we have made it easy for you as a participant. So we have got a module for each week. Then of course, you know, the last week you are supposed to be doing your uh, uh, main assessment uh, tasks that will be given and that will be uploaded on the IDEP platform. As some of you might be familiar, or for those that are new, there will be that platform that will be hosting this and other recordings and also the tasks, the quizzes, and also the last uh, course evaluation that you need to undertake. I also want to encourage you to please follow those instructions on doing your quizzes on time. And also please aim to have you done the last assessment of the course so that you can also get your certificate of competence as opposed to the certificate of participation. Now, the four modules that we'll cover in this particular course include module one, climate change drivers and the historical development of climate and carbon markets. Module two is going to focus on the post Kyoto protocol climate and carbon markets. Module three is going to focus on policy frameworks and incentives for climate and carbon markets. And module four, and the last module for this course will focus on financing the climate and carbon markets. Now, uh, the skills that we are aiming to impart uh, include the following. We want you to holistically understand the linkages between the development of global climate and carbon markets with the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change and the Kyoto Protocol. 
We want you to be able to realize and differentiate between regulatory and voluntary climate and carbon markets. We also want you to grasp the developments in the post-Kyoto Protocol climate and carbon markets, particularly the articles in the Paris Agreement and the provisions of the net zero emissions by 2050 in the Glasgow Pact. We also need you to familiarize with reviewing and adjust policy and institutional frameworks for climate and carbon markets, including regulatory mandates, incentives, and market-driven solutions, uh, especially in your country or regionally, or also collectively as a continent. We wish you to familiarize with financing mechanisms for climate and carbon markets and how these can benefit the African continent. And of course, we want you to advocate for building capacity to analyze, monitor, evaluate, and evaluate climate and carbon markets, uh, development pathways and trajectories for the continent. I'm going to move on to the next section on general pedagogical approaches and modes of delivery for this course. So the course will be delivered, delivered for five weeks, as I indicated earlier. And in the final week, we reserve it for the final evaluation or assessment. The course will also be moderated asynchronously on a weekly basis and participants are required to participate in a weekly online discussions, actually actively participate in online weekly discussions. Lessons are des uh, designed to permit participants to self-assess your understanding or their understanding through practical exercises and additional web links and optional readings are provided for participants who wish to deepen their knowledge of the course or even undertake research in this. The course is delivered in both English and French and the resource team includes a course director myself and a moderator with first-hand knowledge of the historical and contemporary issues in carbon market readiness matters. The resource persons further come with strong comparative insights from other regions of the world and in line with IDEP pedagogical philosophy, the presentation of the course includes a modules will combine a knowledge building component with experience sharing among participants. As for our target audience, which is on my next slide here as I'm uh, recording here, uh, we are looking at senior experts in climate and carbon markets, development economists, development practitioners, and carbon market project developers, academia with interest in climate and carbon markets, senior government officials, who are dealing with matters related to climate and carbon markets, including those from the national treasuries, energy departments, environment departments, trade departments, industry departments, and many others, even in agriculture. We are also uh, considering non-governmental organizations and community-based organizations, top and middle level managers, then development financiers and aid agencies. And lastly, we also welcome senior labor unionists, senior journalists, and editors. Now, as for the details regarding this module objective, uh, remember I said the module is going to, module one is focusing on climate change drivers and historical development of climate and carbon markets. As for the specific objectives to this module, remember we have objectives for the course, and now I'm getting into deeper uh, uh, objectives for specific modules, and I'm starting with module one. Module one uh, has the objective to have participants appreciate the need for carbon markets through understanding trends and drivers of carbon emissions. Number two, we also aim to provide a historical background in the development of global climate and carbon markets with a main focus on the United Nations Framework Convention on climate change and the Kyoto Protocol. We lastly aim to provide insights into regulatory and voluntary climate and carbon markets. For the topics, I will start, when I start uh, the recording uh, on this uh, module, that we are going to focus on the glossary of key terms and concepts associated with the climate and carbon markets. I know some might be aware, but some might not be aware, or even if you are aware, you might need further clarity on some of the terminologies, even the new terminologies that are evolving, things like net zero by 2050. These are all new terminologies that we are encountering in the space. 
climate change drivers, trends, and mitigation carbon uh, and mitigation of carbon emissions. We'll look also at the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, UNFCCC. I think uh, moving forward, I might be using the abbreviation UNFCCC because now we are aware of it and the carbon market. We are also going to look at what we call the greenhouse gas protocol and emission scopes. We are looking at this scope one, scope two, scope three. Don't worry about what we mean by all these scope ones to three of emissions because we'll cover it in detail in the module. We're also going to look at the Kyoto Protocol and the carbon market. Then challenges associated with the Kyoto Protocol's clean development mechanism. And lastly, we'll look at the voluntary compliance carbon market. In module two, we'll, it will focus on the post-Kyoto Protocol climate and carbon markets. And we have set the one main objective to present developments in the post-Kyoto Protocol climate and carbon markets with emphasis on the Paris Agreement and the Glasgow Pact that embraces the net zero emissions by 2050 trajectory or pathway. Some of the topics that are going to be covered there, four major topics, the Paris Agreement and overview. Then we'll look at understanding the nationally determined contributions. We are also going to look at the carbon and, uh, climate and carbon markets in the Paris Agreement, especially Article 6 and other articles there. Then we're also going to look at the Glasgow Pact and the net zero emissions by 2050. Module three will focus on policy frameworks and incentives for climate and carbon markets. And the objectives we have set in this uh, module is one, there are two twin objectives. One, to establish the readiness in policy and institutional frameworks for climate and carbon markets, including regulatory mandates, incentives, and market-driven solutions. And the other objective is to enhance Africa's greenhouse gas emissions reduction efforts, thereby contributing to climate compatible and climate resilient development. The key topics there will start by an overview on the anatomy of carbon markets, policy and regulatory environment. We will move on to carbon taxation and design. We are going to move to tax incentives and subsidy solutions. Then we will look at the proposed and ongoing emissions trading and carbon market schemes. Then the last module, module four, is going to be looking at a very interesting a segment of the course, which is financing the climate and carbon markets. We set one objective there to determine readiness parameters in financing the climate and carbon markets from private sector, multilateral development banks, and other actors. The topics, they look at overview of climate and carbon financing, role of central banks, private and commercial bank financing, role of multilateral development banks, bilateral and multilateral funding. And of course, they're going to be focusing in a very interesting and emerging area of the green and the blue bonds market, green and blue bonds markets. Now, before I move further, I want us to just understand that on your platform for IDEB, we are going to be uploading material. The first one will be an inception uh, report for this course that we have all details in terms of the readings uh, and some of the material that I was presenting here. Then we'll also upload uh, the quizzes for the, for the, for the uh, module, particular module. We'll upload a PowerPoint for that particular module and they will also be uploaded a narrative. These are basically notes that can that, that will accompany you as we learn through. Now, in terms of further reading, like I said, you are going to find this in the inception report and they will be uploaded online for you. Thank you. Uh, this way, our introductory recording ends. Thank you so much. Bye.